Hi, this is Suffolk County Legislator Jay Schneiderman, and welcome to South Fork Focus, where we take an in-depth look at, at issues facing our region. Today we're going to talk about domestic violence and other issues affecting women. And joining me in the studio is Jeff Friedman, who is the Executive Director of The Retreat, as well as Minerva, who is, what is your position at The Retreat? Is Shelter that? Director. Shelter Director for The Retreat. And thank you both for coming on our show. Thank you so much for having us. Great. I appreciate it. So now the retreat is a shelter for women who are victims of domestic violence. Well, actually, the retreat is, is um, a comprehensive domestic violence service organization. Okay. Um, shelter, uh, Minerva runs our shelter, and that's just one of the programs that we have there. Um, okay. Oh, well, good. Uh, so. so you do much more than provide a safe haven for women who are looking for that protection. Absolutely. Okay, but that is one of the functions, and you have, uh, there's one main building that serves that purpose? Actually, we have many buildings throughout the East End oh, good. Um, that, that we help uh, uh, women and children uh, who are oh, suffering wow. from domestic violence. Okay. And you're not just an East End organization, right? Although you provide a shelter that's on the East End, you also reach out to women across Suffolk County, Suffolk right? County, correct. Oh, you know, when, when someone is in an abusive situation, the thing that you want the most is to get them as far away as possible from their abuser. Sure. So we have reciprocal agreements with other organizations in New York City and Nassau County where folks from New York City or Nassau County sometimes will come to our facilities and folks from the East End, to right. keep them safe, will go uh, up island. Now, you are the executive director. and How long have you been? Uh, four years this February. Wow, it's that's great. Now, it, it, was it strange coming in as a man to be head of an organization that's really primarily designed to protect women? I think it was really, it was an unusual choice of our board, but our board is very, very progressive because, you know, 90% of the, the violence is men against women. And this is really, when you look at it, it's not a woman's issue. Right. It's an issue about, you know, we need to have men change their behavior. Sure, that and, makes sense. And uh, I think that having the bold choice of having a male executive director, I think I'm probably one of the only male right. executive directors of the domestic violence organization uh, you know, in the country. So you're not just addressing the symptoms, you're addressing the roots of the problem. Absolutely. Right, by trying mm -hmm. to prevent domestic violence. So you're there for the crisis when it happens, but you're also there to prevent the crisis. Absolutely. Yeah, that's really critical. And our long-term goal is to break that cycle of domestic right. violence, which is really important. Right. Now, domestic violence, can we define that uh, in a way? What, what, should, when, what characteristics would you say constitute domestic violence? Well, I think when you look at domestic violence, most of the time people think about the physical abuse that goes with, along with it. Um, but domestic violence is so much more than that. It's about exactly. uh, really about power and control uh, and about you know, emotional abuse, uh, financial abuse. Uh, verbal. Verbal abuse, absolutely. Right. You know, and, and, and in school, it starts off with bullying uh, that often can lead we, to... You know, we often, I think, as men, think of it as hitting. Like, you know, you, you're striking, um, striking a woman. But it is more than that. It can be, as you say, psychological, Absolutely. emotional. Absolutely. So well. with our new technology that we have, everybody is texting now. So recently I went into a, a, a college class and we talked to the freshmen there. And we would say, how many times does your, your boyfriend or girlfriend text you in a day? Ten times? You know, most of the class raised their hand. We got up to 30, 40, 50 times. That becomes abusive. If somebody sure. is tracking your time throughout when you wake up in the morning all the way to you go to bed, there's something wrong with that. That's right. not a healthy relationship. And now, it's a sign of starting of something bigger. Right. Yeah. You know, it's obviously easier to see the signs of the physical abuse, you know, the black eye, whatever, the broken bone, whatever it might be. Um, it's harder to see the scars, the emotional scars. And, um, I guess you have to do a lot of outreach in that regard. Some people might not even know they're in an abusive situation because you're just so accustomed to it. So how do people find you if somebody is being beaten or, you know, whether it's physical or they're being abused uh, otherwise, how, how do they find the retreat? How do they get in touch with you and get to the shelter? We're constantly doing outreach, and that's why we're so thankful for you to have us on your show because this will get the word out. But we work with the police departments, we work with local hospitals, we work with doctors, we work with the local community to kind of get the word out. And um, it, it is amazing that, um, I'm often amazed how people find us. You know, like our, our, our hotline, which is on the screen right now, is 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Mm -hmm. And 
people call at all hours of the night looking to escape a really violent uh, situation. Do you guys actually advertise as well, so people might see an ad on television or an, on the internet? We, we do, we do. So if you go to our website, uh, www.theretreatinc.org, we have a whole bunch of public service announcements oh, on, on that that people can see. Uh, and really raises the awareness, because I think you're right. Some people might be in a situation and not know or understand that the relationship they're, they're in is not healthy. Well, Liz, I think we actually have a 30-second spot. It's a new advertisement that you guys have produced. And, uh, why don't we run it so at least our viewers get an idea of what the retreat's about. Great. So Jeff, um, the retreat's been active since what year? How when did it start? Uh, 1987. 1987. Uh, and what's really unique about the retreat is that the retreat was started by a few concerned citizens of, uh, of the East Hampton area. And they got together and they said domestic violence is a real problem in our community. And you know, the retreat has been a part of our community for over 25 years. And um, when the retreat first started, we didn't have a shelter. And people in the community would actually take in women and children and families into their own homes okay. uh, to keep them safe. So we live in an amazing community. And really, um, you know, uh, the town, I think when you were town supervisor, uh, was able to build our shelter to really, really protect the women. And uh, we Thank are you. so lucky to have uh, Minerva running our shelter, which is uh, just a very... A complex and challenging place to you know keep sure. people safe and, and, and you have uh, families we see about 150 uh, women and children a year that come through that facility. Well, well let's mm -hmm. go to Minerva and I thank you for leading me on a tour recently sure. thank you of the shelter and uh, it was great <coughs> to see uh, the kids engaged and involved in learning activities and um, if there was a sense of community there mm -hmm. which I thought was terrific. Um, nice building really super clean. Um, how many um, how many beds are at the retreat house? 18 beds we have. In 18 total. beds. Mm -hmm. And is it largely full? Uh, for the most part, we operate at a pretty high capacity. Right. But you keep a certain, you try to keep some available beds in case somebody needs it. And what would be a, a normal duration of somebody staying at the retreat? It averages about 90 days, about three months. It is a crisis shelter, um, so we can't go a whole lot longer than that. Sometimes we're able to do a 45 day extension uh, if it's warranted and we sure. can make it happen, we'll do it. And what has been the response from women who have been there? I mean, are they, uh, has it helped? Is it, is it working? Is it, uh, you know, that when they leave, do they feel a bit safer? And I mean, I've had women, it's, I'm probably, I think, myself and my staff are some of the luckiest people in the agency because we get to see some success stories that you, you wouldn't, you'd be so surprised um, given what they've come in with, the kind of, danger they've come from, the kind of injuries they've suffered themselves and their, and their children, um, to have them leave in such a short period of time, in three months, uh, just stronger individuals, um, knowing what's in front of them. It's not going to be an easy road, you know, sure. what's next, but they're prepared, they're strong, they're looking you in the eye, there's a confidence level, their, their children do really well in the schools. Um, so they often they, end yeah. up just going back into the same setting, into the same environment Not that, that I've in. seen often, and we, we do some follow-up with the clients, or they're sure. calling us, they're letting us know, um, emailing us, calling us at the shelter and saying, okay, I've got this job, this is what I'm doing now. They're proud, and they know that we're so excited by what we're hearing that they want to keep sharing that with us. So they'll, they'll call us often and let us know what's happening. Now, do you um, give yeah. them, do you teach them tools in terms of, sure. you know, learning what resources are out there and mm -hmm. learning how to protect themselves? even potentially orders of protection, things like that, from law enforcement? Within the shelter, we've got a few different key areas of uh, the programming. So we've got a case manager who's working with all aspects of what their job might be when they're leaving there, their, their continued education, um, in terms of their help with basic uh, things like Medicaid or the, the care that they're going to need. We've got a legal advocate that specifically focuses on shelter clients for orders of protection, uh, for taking a look at the police reports that exist, make sure they were done correctly and that all the information is there or amending them if need be. Um, child support and custody, uh, there's a lot of support that we offer just from the shelter itself. 
Then we've got a counselor who provides supportive counseling for the women and for the children. Um, and we've got uh, a medical case manager as well who takes a look at the medical needs because they have really risen a lot um, in terms of um, across the board, uh, the mm -hmm. needs that these, these clients have because that's part of that cycle of, of power and control and abuse is that oftentimes these abusers are keeping them for their from their medical providers knowing that that person will find out that there is abuse going on. So sure. they come to us ch basically needing everything and, um, and I'm thrilled to work where I work because we're able to make a lot happen in three months. Mm. And you yeah. provide, obviously, the meals for them. The meals. There's a little playground for the kids. Sure, sure. Transportation uh, to, you know, in critical areas, whether it's a doctor's appointment or other legal services they need, or just outing. Sometimes we'll put together something. We were able to get a wonderful trip out to the Big Apple Circus. Um, so that was a... You know, it was nice. Yeah. We had a, a donor who uh, gave us a whole bunch of tickets to the Big Apple oh, Circus, and we were able to... To yeah. do that. Well, that's fun. Yeah. Yeah. The, the nice part about our service, and especially we see it, we can see it at the shelter, I think, clearly, is the service is so transformative. When people come in, they're in the midst of crisis. And when they leave, it, it, their, their lives are starting over. It's a new beginning for them. And um, that's a credit to our staff and really the, the wonderful work that they do. Now, Jeff, have you seen the incidence of domestic violence increase, uh, particularly in light of the recession? That's kind of, you know, We've been involved, we've been in with the last few years now, three, four years. Mm -hmm. Has that affected, is there a relationship between the uh, economy and domestic violence? Yeah, there's a, a really a strong correlation between what we're seeing. Over the last two years, we've seen a 96% increase wow. in hotline mm -hmm. calls. Uh, and as people are losing their homes, unemployment rates continue to remain steady or increase, family stress is at an all time high. And because that stress is so high, people are not. Uh, able to cope with it appropriately. Sure. Uh, and we've yeah. seen a lot of people who've never uh, had uh, any dealing with the law, now all of a sudden find them in a situation that, that, that's not really a, a very positive one. Right. So, you know, hopefully the economy will start to improve and that'll make your job a little bit easier. But uh, it's great that you're, you know, you have an organization to respond to those types of crises. But we, you, we also said um, you're trying to prevent crises. And, some of that work uh, extends to working with men, Absolutely. right? So uh, tell me a little bit about that, uh, you know, so, some of your outreach to men, some of the workshops you guys run. Well, we're very proud about uh, 16 months ago, we received a federal grant to work with young fathers who we deem to are at risk for domestic violence. You know, uh, might be unemployed or underemployed, have problems making, you know, payments at home, you know, uh, are, are stressed out for a whole variety of reasons. And we can work with them and provide them with uh, couples counseling, provide them with uh, parenting classes, and help them with employment. And these are the kinds of things that if we can give people a little boost like that, mm. they won't have to go down another path that uh, is destructive uh, and, and doesn't help with any of their relationships. And in these classes, we teach about, you know, in, in these couple counseling, about healthy relationships and what to look for. Um, and the results so far in a very short amount of time have been phenomenal. Right. Now, how do men find out about those types of workshops? Uh, again, uh, they can call our hotline uh, that, that we have up on the screen uh, or visit our website, um, which I think that, you know, um, we weren't sure what the response would be. You know, we ran a whole bunch of commercials in terms of recruiting for that program. And um, the response was phenomenal in terms of people recognizing in themselves that they need help but there was never a program out there. So we, we don't market that program as the retreat, we market it as the Suffolk County Fatherhood Initiative, where you know, men can feel comfortable going out and, and engaging in now, this service. I, I think we have a video as well in terms of promoting the, uh, that program, the, the program for men. The, the video I think we're gonna show is our, our video of engaging men in prevention of domestic violence. And what's so unique about this program uh, in this video that you're going to see is we really talk about how we can break the cycle. And that's so important to us, breaking that cycle of domestic violence. All right, let's see if we can run that. My grandfather, mi abuelo, my grandfather, my grandfather, my grandfather beat my grandmother. He beat my grandmother. La golpeaba mi abuela. My dad. My dad. My dad. Beat my mom. La golpeaba, La golpeaba beat mi mamá. Beat my mom. I'm beating. 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 beating the odds stops here with me because I'm a better man than that 
Well, that's really important work that you're doing to reach out to men. Um, Thank you. So, you know, in terms of the retreat and, uh, you know, its operations, and mm -hmm. I know, Minerva, you're the, the shelter director. Do you want to share any of the, you know, any particular story or anecdote that might illustrate how you're able to, to help women at the retreat? Um, yeah, sure, I'd love to. Uh, a particularly challenging story was a woman coming to us. Um, we got the phone call first that she was going to need help. Uh, because her abuser was uh, coming to a neighbor's house where she was hiding and threatening her um, with a, a weapon. Uh, so she was hiding in the basement, and then when he had gone away, she had called uh, the local authorities that then connected her to us. So that ended up being a wonderful, important referral. Then it became important to figure out how we could physically get her out of that building to us. She had no car. She had a young daughter, and then she also had a son who's about a, 10 years old, um, with severe disabilities, physical disabilities and, and mental disabilities. So uh, she was not able to bring her wheelchair with her uh, when she was fleeing the situation. And um, we had to organize through the local precinct, uh, through the local DSS office, of how to get her from one place um, and kind of leapfrog her to the next place safely and finally to get her to us. Um, so that was a, it was a wonderful effort of how we all kind of came together to bring her there. Uh, and then working with her even still, so this has been several, several months, um, half a year, I think, since she's left our shelter, and working with her now in terms of what her next steps are, um, looking into housing options for her as well. Uh, pretty tough scenario, mm. but we kind of all came together around, around that challenge. Now, how does that make you feel, being able to help somebody like that? I got to tell you, I, you know, I, I only see this as the, the happiest place I could be. People look, you know, so, so it's depressing to do the work you do. And it's not at all, because the women that have come as far as the shelter have such strength that they, uh, that within, that I know there's something positive for them, that they are going to take that and they are gonna, they're going to run with it. And I've seen it. So they're learning yeah. from you and you're learning from them as yeah. well. Yeah. So yeah. how did you end up uh, at the retreat as a director? What's your background? I've done a lot of work in not-for-profit, uh, mainly coming through the theater um, you know, path. Um, but taking the, the work that I've done in the theater, I've done some work um, with internships uh, for uh, at youth, uh, at risk youth, uh, doing some uh, theater workshops with them. I also created my own workshops that I brought to domestic violence shelter in the city, um, up around um, sure. the Yankee Stadium. And um, so I've always had an interest, uh, and definitely have always been an advocate uh, working Absolutely. with the Latino I remember you community. coming to the legislature to uh, advocate <laughs> advocate against the discriminatory policy. Yeah. Uh, that was before the legislature years ago. So, uh, yeah, I don't like yeah. bullies too and much. You were so. very, <laughs> and you spoke so well and so passionately, yeah. and I think yeah. you really influenced the decision, which ultimately was to not pass the law. Thank you for um, That would that. have really just created more tension and more mm -hmm. problems for the um, Latino community in that case. So thank you for that. And uh, I, I think this is a great place for you at the right. retreat. I really do. I mean, because I, I think women can really learn from and feel confident in your presence. Uh, I think it's a really good good fit. And Jeff, what about you, your, your background? How did you end up as the executive director of the retreat? Yeah, I've been in nonprofit uh, close to 20 years and working with a variety of populations and a variety of different people. And you know, uh, everyone knew, knows about the retreat's reputation in the field of nonprofit. It's got a great reputation. And when the opportunity presented itself, I knew this is something I really wanted to do. Right. We have an amazing staff. Minerva is, is amazing, and we're very, very lucky to have her, as I said before. And the staff, uh, the other staff and the other programs are, are just incredible. People who, um, this is more than a job to them. This right. is really, they want to have an impact on people's lives, and they wake up every morning in, 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 in figuring out a way that they can help people. And it's, it's an incredible place to be a part of. No, it must cost a fortune to run the retreat and to do all this outreach. And I know. The county is one piece of your funding, right. and I'm happy to be a part of that and Absolutely. advocate for you. Um, where else does your funding come from? Well, before I get to that, I just want to say, you know, we're so thankful to you in oh, terms of you. really being an incredible advocate for us yeah. and understanding yes. how important this issue is. I appreciate that. Uh, and many, many years we've worked together on many things, and um, it's been a nice partnership. Um, and, you know, the retreat's funding is made up from a variety of sources, and one source is, is, is the generosity of people from the community. And it's so important that um, 
we do get those uh, donations and so we can be able to do the great work. And they're obviously tax deductible donations. Absolutely. Right? And so how does, if somebody, maybe somebody's out there listening and wants to contribute to the retreat to help you do the great work that you're doing, how do they do that? Uh, they can donate at our website. They can go right to our website, theretreatinc.org. And, uh, Actually, I think we have, we have it right here. Look so at let's that. see if we can get that up onto the screen. We'll, we'll show the website. <laughs> and you see on the upper right-hand corner, Donate Now. Sure. Uh, people can go and donate right there. And I think, you know, when, when you think of programs like the program that Minerva runs, uh, that program constantly runs. We get funding from the county, which we're so grateful for. But after that funding, we still have a 40% deficit that we have mm -hmm. to fill. And that deficit is filled through generous uh, donations. Now you hold some functions throughout the year, mostly in the summer, I think, right? Oh, we do, we do, yeah. We have our golf outing coming up at Maidstone on May 16th. Right. I came, I think, to one of those. I was you your auctioneer. You <laughs> were, you were fantastic. <laughs> Any time. Uh, wow, well, we have yeah. you back. Good, and, love uh, to. Uh, our Artist Against Abuse event is on June 22nd okay. uh, this year. So we will have some big announcements in the coming weeks of who will be involved with that. Do you that. know where that's going to happen again? Uh, at the Ross School the in Ross School. Bridgehampton. Right. It's where it was last year. Absolutely. Uh, sure. and, and you were there, so you, yeah. you, you were there with the, all the excitement. Love to come back again. Uh, more than happy no, to have great, you. Great, great event. Uh, um, but, you know, they can come to those events. They can also just go to the website and click Donate Now, and they can... Uh, uh, make a contribution right like that. Absolutely. And other ways to help, people can come and volunteer. Mm -hmm. We're always looking okay, for good so volunteers. How do, men or women or just women? Men or women. Absolutely. Right, now how do they do that? How, uh, again, through our website, they, there are opportunities, volunteer opportunities. You know, we have a very successful thrift store in the Bridgehampton Commons. Right. Uh, and people can volunteer there, and we have other uh, uh, other and activities. They have great deals, <laughs> and now you've got furniture there too. Uh, absolutely, so yeah. a lot of hidden treasures there. And, yeah, uh, no, it's at the Bridgehampton Commons. Uh -huh. It's kind of uh, across from Radio Shack, yeah, TJ, TJ Maxx, Max, right. out mm -hmm. in the parking lot. There's a building there. Absolutely, uh, ret the Retreat Boutique. Right, yes. right, yes. right. And so yeah. for for us to operate, it takes all of these pieces. To, to make things happen. Right. Volunteers, the thrift store, donations. It takes a village. Now, people it truly can does. Donate to that if they have furniture mm -hmm. or rather than having a garage sale, they can bring it right there. Right, absolutely. And is it tax deductible tax as well? Tax deductible mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Great. And you'll take pretty much anything? What do you what kind of stuff? Uh, well, we do take anything. Stuff that some stuff that people bring in, we ask them to be gently used. Gently used sure. furniture, gently used clothes. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's been uh, an amazing uh, a source of revenue for our, to continue our mission And for when us. do you drop off? Anytime? What's the store hours? Uh, anytime. Uh, this, we're open uh, seven days a week. Wow. Uh, you know, uh, the store is open, I think, uh, 11 to 6. So any day. Oh, I have to add something to this. Um, we're lucky enough that we're able to transport our clients from the shelter uh, directly to the thrift store so that they can have their own shopping experience. Of course, everything we're, we're giving to them. Um, but it's such a nicer way for them to um, put together a wardrobe when they've left everything. Uh, right. And many folks are coming to us with absolutely nothing. Do you find sometimes, you know, you've got to relocate somebody to mm -hmm. a new home. They need mm -hmm. furniture. They basically sure. are rebuilding their entire life, mm -hmm. right? right? So they can go to the thrift store. They and can I'm shop sure you develop free. a certain, you know, attachment to that person. You want to make sure after their experience at the retreat that, <laughs> they, <laughs> that they get off to a, an okay yeah. start. So you guys stay involved and you continue mm -hmm. to correspond or communicate yeah. with that with those individuals, a family. Yeah, whatever through the, through it might the shelter, be. We, we do all that. Yeah. Do you ever see male victims of domestic violence? Is that something? We get those hotlines, and right now we currently have clients. Really? Yeah. Okay. I think there's such a there's a stigma with domestic violence in general, mm -hmm. but with men, uh, there's a real stigma in our society in terms of what's acceptable to reach out for help in those situations, and and uh, you know. Uh, Female domestic violence is unreported. Male domestic violence is, is uh, uh, through the charts unreported. So again, if somebody does not feel safe mm -hmm. in their home, in work environment, whatever it might be, um, and they need shelter or they just need someone to talk to, mm -hmm. to understand, maybe they're not sure whether it's a case of domestic violence. Mm -hmm. All they know is they're scared. Mm -hmm. um, what should they do? They call you? They call law enforcement? What should be... You know, what's the right step? If they're an emergency and they fear for their life or they feel that they're going to get hurt, they should call the police immediately. Call the police. Yeah. And the if, police may refer them to you? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. So you obviously work closely with the police. Very closely. But if somebody is scared about their future or, you know, uh, 
feels that something's going to happen in the future, or they're, they're not in the midst of a, a, you know, a crisis, they can call us, and we're, we're there 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Right. Even mm -hmm. if they're not sure, they just mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. are afraid somebody's going to hit them, whatever mm -hmm. it is. They can give you guys the hotline a call? Sure. Okay. And there's somebody there to talk to, and they can uh, get some help figuring out what the best course of action for themselves? 24 hours a day. 24 hours a day. Yeah. That's, that's great. And, and the hotline, uh, hopefully we have it on the screen, mm -hmm. um, and people can call that. So, In case they can't see it, it's 631-329-2200. Now, what's the future for the retreat? Are you guys uh, expanding? Are you reaching out to other areas? Uh, well, I think for us, what we're looking to do is housing is such an important issue on, on Long Island, and affordable housing is very difficult. And we're looking for options where our clients can go after they've been in the shelter or when they leave, have to leave an abusive mm -hmm. situation, sure. that we can help them out. So that we're really taking a careful look at that and, and, and exploring those options for, for our folks. Right. There's actually a lot of groups right now that are looking mm -hmm. at housing issues and trying to figure, because you know, that seems to be a critical component. Mm -hmm. you know, wages aren't enough afford the rents and the mm -hmm. other, you know, related expenses, utilities, and, um, telephone, all those things, mm -hmm. gasoline. Um, so we have a real problem in Suffolk County with the numbers really not adding up and a real recipe for poverty. We're seeing that at the, you know, uh, in social services with the growing numbers of homelessness mm -hmm. and, um, you know, real challenges ahead. And uh, unfortunately, that may be a recipe also for more domestic violence. So it's really mm -hmm. a important that we have your organization and there's a few other domestic violence prevention mm -hmm. organizations in Suffolk County and I know you guys um, communicate and work mm -hmm. together. Well it's really been a, a pleasure having you both on the show. Is, is there anything else you want to add before we, uh, we go to credits? I just want to thank you so much for creating this forum and being as supportive as you've been. It's really wonderful. Thank you. And I'll echo that and I, we thank the community for their generosity. The mm -hmm. community has really been wonderful to us and uh, we uh, wouldn't be able to provide the services that we do without them. All right, Jeff Friedman, thank right. you. Thank you. Minerva, thank you so thank much. You. Thanks for your great work. Thank you. Appreciate having you on the show. Appreciate you having me.